Okay, in this tutorial we're going to be taking a look at photometric lighting and because photometric lights are real-world scale we are going to have to make sure that we're using real-world scale in our objects. So I made what represents a corner of a room. I have this at 12 feet by 10 feet by 9 feet and we're just going to be looking at the photometric settings, basic settings um, and then we'll be moving into the IES lights. So again I just have my box, I'm going to go into the create menu and go to lights. Photometric is the default setting and I'm going to pick a target light. So when you create a photometric light this warning for photometric light creation comes up and it is letting you know that the logarithmic exposure control is recommended for use. So you can say yes to accept that or no if you do not want to use this control setting. So the, where this can be found is in the environment and effects dialog. So I'm going to accept this and then I'm going to go up under my render tab and here you'll see we have 8 as our um, shortcut. We can come into either of these or exposure control. I'm just going to click on environment. We have exposure control. Logarithmic exposure control is set. So again I can hit 8 on my keyboard to get to this setting. Here's my logarithmic control. I can go up under rendering and go down to exposure control. Here it is again. So any of these ways we can get into this setting. The photometric lights, real world scale for our room. I'm going to go in and just go to target light, click on it. To create this I'm, I'm going to go to the left side. I left the box as a dark gray so I could see easier when I place the light and I'm dragging out my target now. Release, right click to end that operation. I'm going to go back to perspective and alt drag to navigate. So we'll take a look at some of the parameters in the target light. I'm going to go to the modifier tab with the light selected. Now just remember just like your other lights if you have a target we can select a target, move the target, you can select the light to move the light or you can select the blue line between the two and if you were to select the blue line between the two and you move you get the whole unit. So just in case you're you're unaware of that. The other thing is when you get multiple lights in the scene you may want to go down and open up your light lister and your light lister will give you some of the basic controls on that light. In the light lister all of your lights will be listed their intensity, what type of map or shadow you're generating, the size, um, as you change this, you'll get different parameters for that. So in our scene here, I have a dark gray wall. I'm going to select the wall, and I'm just going to turn it white so we can see better how these lights are reacting to the scene. Now, when you start 3ds Max, it does not turn on the lights in your scene. So to turn those on, I'm going to go underneath Standard. I'm going to go to Lights and Shadows, and then click on illuminate with scene lights and now I get the scene lights. So I have the target light selected. Right here we're able to pick a template so we can pick a certain light bulb and it will generate the light from that light source at that intensity. Here we have a halogen light. It's a very pinpoint one right now. So we can go and play around with the, uh, the hot spot and our fall off. Again, some other presets we can use. And then our light distribution. We have our cone. Just like the standard lights, we can pick to have the cone visible when we have the light deselected or not visible when we have the light deselected. And now we have our color intensity and we can go in and pick different light types just like we did with the templates. So if I want something that's a warmer light, a cooler halogen, just go through and, and see what the different intensities are. And then we can enter our Kelvin value. So if we want 
um, something more like a pure white light or sunlight, then we can enter a Kelvin value of 6500. If we drag this down, you'll see that the lower the value, the redder our light gets. If we drag it up, the higher the value, the bluer our light gets. And I'll put it back to 65,000. And then you can just add in a color. If you wanted to just tint your light, you're able to do that here. Here is the way that we're reading intensity. So we have lumens, candelas, and then lux. And we can just pick um, whatever result we want for our intensity slider. So if we want to make adjustments to our brightness, we can increase or decrease our intensity in any of these uh, light units, which we'll talk about in another video. And down here we have our far attenuation. We can use the far attenuation. And this is going to show where it starts and stops. So if I pull my light up, we can see that we have the end of our light value here. And I can move that further out. And then the start of our light value. So where we have the fall off begin. So let's pull this, I'm going to rotate it a bit towards the wall. Here you can see where my light cone is and then where we have our attenuation. So let's go and pull that closer. And then there you see how we're getting our fall off from this. Um, the shape of our light and shadow. So we can pick different shapes for the light to be projected from. So let me pull my cylinder light, uh, a spherical light, disc, and rectangle. So we can change the size and shape of our light. So here I'm going to change our light distribution type. So we can have a uniform diffuse. Back to a spotlight. And then the last one we're going to look at is a photometric web. And what a photometric web is, is with a photometric web, we're going to pick a uh, pre-existing light calculation. And you can find these on the internet. And we're going to load that. So I'm going to just go into this light. I'm going to set it back to the spotlight for a second. And just position it. Position the target so I get a target straight down. And then I'm going to go to Photometric Web. And now I have a target with my light. And I'm going to move the whole unit. So again, I'm going to click on the blue line over to the side. And you're able to go on the internet and type in IES light files. And you'll be able to download some Photometric Web uh, profiles. So I do have photometric scene set up and I'm going to go and put some of these light profiles in so it will go into my scene assets photometric and then navigate to the scene that we're using. So in my photometric I'm going to go to scene assets photometric and then put this copy of the IES lights now when I go back into 3ds Max, I click Choose Photometric. So here is my IES. I'm going to click and pick one. So I'm just going to pick one of these lights and place it in. And when we place it, we get this shape for our light. So here is an image of the way the light is going to project down. And then we can go in and we can make adjustments down here 
and rotate the light. It's just a little easier to do it in this tab than it is in the viewport. But you can also go into the viewport and rotate your light if you want. So I have uh, several of these. You can simply go on the internet and type in IES files and a lot of lighting uh, manufacturers will generate these. So, and just go through and find ones that you like. And that's all I did. I, I've got quite a few. So I'll just pull out a couple more of these and we'll take a look at them. So now I have five copies of this light. I'm going to select the second light, go and create a separate light profile and take a look at that one. And here is what that one looks like and I'm just going to reset these by right clicking. Zoom in a little. I'm going to lower the intensity a little bit here so we can see the, the profile a bit better on this one. And again, depending on the way you want to adjust your light, you can roll and rotate this. Um, we, we are getting light up the top as well at the bottom. So things like this are good for if we have a light fixture that we're generating to put that in there. And we'll do one more. I'm going to come in. We're still in Valent, so I'm going to pick a different one. And you'll see we get very different results from these light profiles. And I will go back up and pick a post top. And with this one, again, I'm just going to come into my intensity and lower that a bit so we can see what we're getting. I get a bit of a light bounce up at the top and then this light at the bottom. And we'll do one more. I'll just pick a different balance. Again, when you're clicking on them, you can see what the different profiles look like and you can try and pick one that you think will be interesting. What I think is a good idea is not only to have this, but to do little frame grabs of the light, what that light really looks like, and you can make yourself a little chart so you can see what the end result will be. You can spend a lot of time going through these just trying to find the light that works for you. So something like this would look really nice in a lantern if we have edges on the sides. They create really nice realistic lighting. So if I have a light fixture in a room, I would prefer using these. It'll give me the feeling of an actual light hitting those walls. So that is the IES lighting, or the web, photometric web light.